I know this is an event that's aimed at uh, showing some of the achievements of Joan, but let me tell you about one of my achievements. I'll take you back to October 1st, 1956. Probably many of you were not alive then. And I was a first year law student at Georgetown living on the campus. And like most first year law students, one day felt rather low, depressed maybe, and left my room, went out through the gates of Georgetown, walking down O Street. And as I came to 36th Street, this uh, young woman came around the corner. Brilliant red hair, beautiful young woman. I had met her a couple times before, but fairly briefly, and we, we talked that day for probably two or three minutes, no longer. I, th <clears throat> I think that I realized then that this is the person I wanted to marry. I've known Joan uh, for some 48 years now since Boston College Law School when I was Fred's research assistant. It is because of Fred and Joan that Anne and I are here. And in fact, the house we originally moved into and rented, they found for us and we moved in sight unseen. Joan and Fred and I started at the UNM Law School together, in a way. I was an entering first year student in the fall of 1966 and Joan and Fred and their young family moved here from Boston College where he was a tenured professor uh, for him to serve here as a visiting professor for one year. Joan Hart. I think she was married to a guy that worked at the law school, isn't that right? No, I met, I met Joan Hart the summer of 1969 when I came down here to teach in what later became the Pre-Law Summer Institute. I met Joan in January of 1972, and it turned out that she was responsible for the luckiest thing in my life, which was becoming the first woman law professor at UNM Law School. I think anyone who has spent time with my parents knows how grounded they are and how, you know, how faithful they are. Um, but especially my mom, you know, she, she inspires greatness in people. What we wanted to do was to establish a community here, a community of students and teachers. That was a friendly community, a community where people enjoyed being here, enjoyed working with each other, and where there was a common purpose of teaching and learning. Joan was the real heart of that, not me. She is the one with the compassion. She is the one with the empathy. She is the one with the understanding of individuals. I got to know Joan a lot more starting in 1971 when I was hired to be a faculty member. By that time, Joan was very much a presence at the law school. When we started in 1966, this was a small law school. It was still uh, a paper chase, fear and loathing example of the way legal education was in those days. And we were terrified of all the professors, including Fred Hart, for good reason. Five years later, when Fred Hart became dean, the whole thing changed. And Joan Hart had a large part in that. She was in everything. She knew every student. She was passionate about making this the best law school it could possibly be the best in the country. She was a full partner of Fred, as of course Desi and the whole faculty were. It was a marvelous time to be at UNM. My tenure here at the law school is in large part due to the hearts, and Joan has been a major part of that. Her presence at the law school, both in spirit as well as physically, her passion, her compassion, her support of all of us has influenced not only me, but the faculty, the faculty's families, the faculty's children for all these years. My mom's influence on, on the people, especially in the early years when the law school was making great changes. I mean, she was one of those, she's one of those people who, who really believes that great challenges are great opportunities. 
and she, she really, I mean, that's, a lot of people say that, that's really who my mom is. And she approached the law school community as part of our family. Um, there was, uh, every student ate dinners at our home. Every faculty member was at our home, you know, all the time. Um, it was an interesting experience as a kid growing up, uh, seeing how much fun she inspired, how much fun she brought to what is actually kind of hard work. Joan, when Fred married her, her whole life, she's been a superstar to the point she went to Georgetown undergraduate. Uh, she was a big participant in Georgetown all her life. She was put on the Georgetown board, the university board, not some alumni board, the university board for two full terms. And she won the John Carroll Medal, which is a huge thing at Georgetown. They give it to only four alumni a year, and they have tens of thousands of alums. It's a huge school. And that will give you some feel for how outstanding Joan Hart was as an undergraduate, as an adult, as a participant in a major university's. She is a phenomenal person. We were so lucky to have her here in New Mexico. One of the things that Joan did was she uh, had all of the law students over for dinner. This was about oh, six or seven weeks we did it and had them sign up and they came all for dinner and, and it was just a social agreement whether they could get to know each other a little better and where there was the spirit, I suppose, of, of family maybe uh, that, that occurred. The, the law community, the law family um, was something that was year round and in the summers, it was somewhere in the mid 70s. Um, my mom convinced my sisters, my brother and I to, to start a, a day camp. So she opened up her home in the summers to the children of faculty and students. And we had this day camp, it went on for years. Um, and the, uh, it was at times we had 60, 50 to 60 children at my parents' house and all these different arts and crafts and sports activities and it was amazing, you know, it, um, and uh, it went on for years and those connections continued. I mean, the, the children of faculty became friends of each other and, and one of the, I was, I found this the other day, this is one of the, uh, the heart, I think I stole this from uh, either one of Browdy's kids or Aquilino's kids or something, but this was, imagine 60 little kids running around the house with these little hats on and that lasted well, that lasted, I don't know, probably 15 years. It's almost certain that we would not have had the American Indian Law Program but for Joan. Joan's husband, whose name escapes me at the moment, I think it was also Hart, um, he came out here as a visiting professor. We had a very small faculty at that point in time, and the dean had asked me if I would direct it, and I said no. And I went home and um, <clears throat> told Joan about it, and she said, you're you're a darn fool. And I said, well, I wanted to write a book. And she said, well, you can always write a book. This is a chance of a lifetime. And um, I went back, and the job was still open, and I took it. UNM Law School would have been quite different, and the Indian people would have been, situation would have been different. And it's all due to Joan Hart uh, taking the position, take, so she's, she quietly but firmly expresses her opinions. I don't even say firmly, definitively. And if you have any sense, you'll listen to them carefully and consider them. And Fred Hart does have a little bit of sense enough to listen to Joan Hart. Joan was, Joan was always uh, on the side of the students. It, it's interesting. During one year, we had some streaking at a... At a um, at a uh, moot court program. Um, about half a dozen law students did it at the law school. They streaked through a first year mock trial presided over by a real district judge and it caused a big flap. It was in the front page of the newspapers. There was outrage in the legal community. And I remember coming back and home and telling her about this and she and she sort of said, well, that's really funny. And that's in, I bet they had a good time and things like that. And he was surprised because she burst out laughing. She thought it was funny. 
And it sort of changed his attitude about it. Uh, but then she turned serious. She said, Fred, are they gonna get in trouble? You can't let them get in trouble. You have the job of protecting them. And that was just one example of, of her continual concern for, uh, for the student body and for, for faculty too. One of the most telling memories I have of, with Joan is her support for my wife, Anne, and Anne's work with children. Uh, as we all know, Joan has also worked with children with it. But John supported Anne so much and believed so, so much in what Anne was doing and that she nominated Anne for a Woman of the Year Award. It is something I will not forget. I am immensely honored to be asked to speak about Joan Hart because of what she's done for so many people. I may be the least of them. Individual students for the law school, for her spirit, for her passion about the UNM Law School and for who she is. There have been a lot of things that have happened to this law school that Fred Hart uh, justifiably has gotten credit for. Uh, he's done more than any human being who's ever worked at this law school to help make it what it's become, to change it from what it was when I started as a student to what it's become today, a student-centered law school. Um, but even though she never had an official title here, even though she never had a job here, her fingerprints are all over this place. In my mind, she'll always be the First Lady Emeritus of the University of New Mexico School of Law. You know, sometimes they talk about a dean, dean of the law school, a, a, a school being run by the spouse of the dean rather than by the dean himself or herself. To the extent that was true, the law school was fortunate because she was far better than I and she would have been a far better dean. It is fitting and proper that you honor her tonight and I thank you and I know she does. <laughs>